Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John. I thought you'd never ask. It's Wednesday. It is the first day of April. It's April Fool's Day. It is. So be careful out there. I got a feeling people are going to be tricking you today, especially if people Who's are- Who's going to trick you? I mean, if you're, somebody maybe else? the person you live with. In your house. <laughs> um, it's also Child Help National Day of Hope. It's National One Cent Day. National Sourdough Bread Day. Oh, Ooh, I love sourdough I do bread. Too. And National Walking Day. Good day to maybe get in a walk. Um, we also, should do that today. We should. Also, I've got a, a, a guest that I'm really excited to talk to, Joshua Makuga. Now, there's some people listening that already know the name, but for those of you who don't, he is a vintage food expert, and the reason other folks know him is because he and Old Smokey embark on a quest to uncover, unbox, and eat the oldest, most nostalgic, and shocking foods that have survived history. It's a new History Channel unscripted series called Eating History. And there's some weird things that they've eaten. I'm, I'm excited to chat with him because what, a, what an interesting dude. It's all on the way. If you grew up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you should consider joining us for this amazing vacation. My wife and I have been to this event the last three years, and we've had a blast. Join us at The Sands. Hear amazing music from Billy Idol. Cheap Trick. Belinda Carlisle. Little River Band. The Hooters. Tesla. Howard Jones. And many more. Plus, meet awesome stars from movies and TV. It's the best week ever. Learn more right now at thesands.rocks. That's thesands.rocks. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. A supercomputer at Oak Ridge National Library has conducted a study that identified 77 drugs that could treat coronavirus. That's a really smart thing. So they put it into a computer and had this computer run through and say, oh, this might work and that might work and this could work and that could work. Great. That's a good use of surveys and studies and such. Usually at this time, we're shocked at... What a vast waste of resources they use to come up with the dumbest conclusions. But today, yeah, absolutely. Good That's job, guys. Fantastic. Good job at Oak Ridge National Library. Thanks for listening to surveys and studies and such on the John and Heidi Show. Not all credit cards are created equally. Some cards have higher rates, some have annual fees, some are just not very good. Often people will sign up for these because that's all they qualify for. But if you've done that, it may be time to get a better credit card. Over time, your situation can change. Then you could qualify for a better credit card, one that offers you a better rate, or one that offers miles, points, cash back, or whatever is the best fit for you. Check it out for free at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. This is Your Brain on Drugs, brought to you by TimeForRehab.com. A New Mexico man is facing charges after he told police he unknowingly stole two televisions. Oh, yeah, accidentally. Wh- while he was drunk. It says here, uh, well. uh, it says the victim went to his apartment to return the TVs. According to the police, he was investigate- they were investigating a burglar report. And that's when he uh, admitted that, yeah, I, I did steal the TVs, but I was very intoxicated. Says, and he uh, was trying to bring them back. It sounds like it. I'm kind of yeah, reading through I, this here. I, I can see how that could happen. Drunk Heidi has done some things that <laughs> I have no idea that she did. So. Says the police report says he only remembers knocking on the door. And when it was apparent nobody was home, he entered the residence, did not remember what happened after that. Turns out when he woke up at 830 the next day, he noticed, no, I've got two TVs yeah. in my room. <laughs> 24-year-old Cummins was arrested, charged with receiving stolen property, and released on an unsecured bond of fifteen hundred bucks. So, but he was trying to do the right thing. I and think so. Them. Yeah, he was very know. intoxicated. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. That's what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Council of Dads is a new drama based on the book by the same name about a family that loses its uh, patriarch uh, to cancer and then three men in his life who step in to help raise five children who range in age from the mid-20s to a newborn. And uh, it does not say what channel that's on. I probably deleted that. I didn't mean to. Um, but this i got to take the rest of our time to talk about this. Several stars from the Netflix series Tiger King are said to be furious with their portrayal on the show. Now, if you haven't seen it, I actually watched this because it was all over Facebook. And I was like, "What? what is this? I'm going to sum it up here. If you haven't seen it, uh, one woman is accused of killing her husband. Another guy is accused of having eight sex slave wives. Uh, another guy married to three different men, breeds cats illegally, and then hires supposedly a hitman to kill his rival. 
All of that. And it's based, it's all true. It's not like this was a story somebody set no, down. The people are saying it's Well, not true. and that's where they're going. They're going, ah, that's not quite correct. So if you want to read the story, I've got a link to uh, what their allegations are. It's all in the show notes for today at John and Heidi Show.com. Drinking too much can ruin your life. Alcohol and drug issues can cause problems at work, at home, and pretty much everywhere. If substance abuse has taken over your life and you want to quit, there is help. Timeforrehab.com could be the first step in the right direction for you. Timeforrehab.com would love to help you find a new life beyond addiction. Your insurance company may even cover the cost to help make this happen. You can learn more now at timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now your scoop of the day, brought to you by InsuranceChicken.com. Michelle Williams and her boyfriend Thomas Kale may have secretly gotten married after they were seen wearing rings on their fingers in New York. And if this somehow affects your life, you really seriously need to seek help. <laughs> Britney Spears reposted a piece that called, the restrib- re- called for the redistribution of wealth during the coronavirus. So I think it was actually originally shared by Kevin Federline, (laughs) Uh, a New York medical consultant who worked on the movie Contagion has tested positive for coronavirus. And, you know, they're saying, oh, that's crazy because that movie was kind of like this. I'm like, "Eh, not really. Kind of, I guess. But all right. I've got a story here about a lady. I don't know who she is, but I'll bet a lot of people out there listening do. Chloe Sevigny, S-E-V-I-G-N-Y, Sevigny, Chloe Sevigny, eight months pregnant but won't be able to have anyone accompany her in the delivery room because of the coronavirus mm-hmm. rules. So we have a friend that has yep. a daughter in the same, same situation. Yep. So uh, sorry for you, Chloe. I'm sad to hear that. Uh, newly released court documents show that Michael Strand's ex-wife once had a yard sale with all of his possessions while he was out of town playing football. <laughs> what did he do? You know there's got to be something to there's that story. There's a story there. Uh, earlier this month, Tito's was warning drinkers that their vodka – would not be an effective hand sanitizer to combat coronavirus because their liquor is only 40% alcohol and sanitizer needs to be 60%. But the dream of a vodka hand sanitizer was not far from being realized. Just last week, Tito's announced they would transform their distillery into a sanitizer production facility, filling huge needs as the country is facing a shortage of hand sanitizer. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so from tequila to hand sanitizer. Geologists have discovered the earliest known ancestor to most animals alive today, including humans an organism that lived 555 million years ago. Hmm. So there you go. And uh, toilet paper is a hot commodity these days. 15 years ago this week, 14,000 rolls of TP were delivered to Edward A. Rath County Office Building in Erie County, Pennsylvania. The toilet paper was donated by Procter & Gamble. The company heard about a restroom supply shortage at the Rath Building and decided to make a donation. Erie's budget, Erie County's budget crisis, made national news because the shortage of supplies at the building. It was estimated the toilet paper would last about two years, and that was fourteen thousand rolls of Good toilet Lord. paper. Yeah, that happened uh, fifteen years ago. And one last story here: Just Born Quality Confections, the candy maker that produces Peeps. They've got some bad news, Heidi. Oh, what? Yeah. The Peeps, Mike and Ike's Hot Tamales, they temporarily halted production amid the COVID-19 outbreak. They say all the Peeps produced have been shipped to retailers ahead of the Easter holiday, so everything's okay for now. There just might be a Peep shortage like after Easter, (laughs) maybe. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Introducing (laughs) InsuranceChicken.com. Why InsuranceChicken.com? Why not? Another insurance company has a duck, one has an emu, and that other company has a lizard. So insurancechicken.com is no more silly than any of those. Is it time for you to cross the road for your insurance? Don't be chicken. Check out insurancechicken.com. We'll help you peck out the best insurance rates we can find at insurancechicken.com. That's insurancechicken.com. And joining us on the phone right now, we have Josh McCuga. This program on History Channel, Eating History, this is a really fun idea for a show. Who came up with this concept? Um, so History Channel uh, has been amazing. They This has been something they've been working on for a little while, and the uh, the great people at Sharp Entertainment have put this whole thing together, and kind of a perfect storm for me, because um, you know, myself and Old Smokey, Old Smokey is a, is a vintage food just fanatic, and he's a, he's a breadth of knowledge. It's unbelievable how much he knows about all this stuff. And I come from a long line of, of collectors, and you know, my dad was a collector, all my uncles, aunts, everybody uh, collecting all kinds of wild stuff, and I just so happened to be the one that was always trying to open them and eat them. And this came along at like a perfect time, and 
you know, with with where we are in our country and the world right now with all this stuff, it couldn't have come at a better time for people wondering what's in their pantry and, you know, can I eat that? You know, we're going to take you on that adventure. When you guys are doing this, some of the stuff that you're eating, like I'm reading through the information here, some of the stuff from the 1940s, is it still safe uh, to eat that? Um, you know, we... We, we're, we're definitely very cognizant of like, hey, uh, we're not telling you to go out and eat that. We are we are experts. We had a food toxicologist and a, and a medic on set. Uh, but, you, you know, there are a lot of things out there that aren't safe to eat, and there are a lot of things that are. And uh, I think that's a beautiful part of the show is, um, you know, we, we, we definitely are very careful. You know, we, we every step of the way, we are, uh, you know, we're, we're very cautious as to where we are and, you know, we smell it, you look at it, you know, if it's not, if it doesn't look good and it doesn't smell good, it's not going to taste good and more than likely it's going to be pretty dangerous. So, you know, there is that, there's that inherent risk in the show. Yeah. So it literally has to pass the sniff test. It, it sure does, John. It sure does. I'm reading on here uh, some cereal from 1984, the Star Wars CP, uh, C-3PO cereal, uh, some vintage yeah. NASA rations or some other things. What would you say is the most interesting yeah. thing that you guys have come across for the program? Man, um... You know, the, every day was a real adventure on the set. It's hard to it's hard to pick one. You know, we had some some awesome sodas. Um, we had like 1930s uh, Cracker Jack. Um, we've had you know we've had the the Civil War, um, the 50th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. We had hardtack that was served at that 50th anniversary. We've had um, you know my my favorite thing that we tried, and I'll say this, and I'll keep saying it until something blows my mind again, but we had first-generation Pringles, and Pringles are like my favorite snack food, and they were just, they were still perfect, John. They were still just absolutely fantastic. That is really, really cool. Now, one of the things that I see on the list that that is from my childhood is the new Coke from back in the mid-'80s. Where do you find something like that? So, you know, there there's an amazing culture of people out there that are, that are food collectors, um, that, or they, you know, Maybe back in the day, they saw the new Coke and thought, I'm just going to keep a can because this may never be around again, which uh, I think for a lot of diehard Coca-Cola fans, wasn't. Um, and, you know, we were the Internet can be a really crazy place, but it's in, in our line of work, it's an amazing place because a lot of people put these things, you know, on a blog or they'll put it up on eBay or they'll put it up, you know, somewhere where food collectors can see it. We reach out to them, we talk to them, we get their backstory, and... Uh, you know, that, that new Coke story, when we go into the history of some of these items, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they eat it, they drink it, they never think about looking into what the history is all about. And that's what the beautiful part of this show is. It's not all about shock factor. It's not all about, you know, grossing people out or anything like that. We, we take you on a really cool learning adventure. Give me that backstory. It's a water cooler kind of a show. And with new Coke, you know, that was a huge risk that did not work out. And I got to tell you, some 40 years later, it's still not working out. It did not age well, you're saying? It did not age well. <laughs> Again, our guest today, Josh, is on a program on History Channel called Eating History. And uh, you're a vintage yep. food expert. You and Old Smokey working together on this uh, on this program. I think that's really a, a fun concept. Uh, is there like another season in store, or did you guys eat everything that you plan on eating? <laughs> There, this is there is endless possibilities uh, when it comes to food and drink and you know what where things are and what has aged over time. Uh, I would love you know this see this show could go on you know ten fifteen seasons each season you know giving us uh, more and more opportunities to try older foods and drinks and you know my my dream scenario is you know one of these days when somebody uncovers a shipwreck and they find you know things have been buried under the ocean or something like that, that we get that sent to us and we're able to try it. Or we even go and investigate a shipwreck. I think that the, the, the possibilities are endless as far as what we can try and what we can eat. And you know, even some things that we may not be able to try that just have an amazing story. You know, That is really cool. Do you have like a holy grail of this is what I really would like to get to eat? Man, you know, I would love, you know, Napoleon, the, the crazy story is Napoleon is the one that really came up with canned how to can food for his soldiers, right? Yeah. And so if we're able to find some stuff that was maybe like Napoleon-era canned foods, you know, some old military stuff from, from back then that we may never see again that's been stored somewhere or found somewhere, that'd be a pretty cool Holy Grail kind of an item. Well, if somebody listening knows where to find that, I'll make sure that they reach out to you. <laughs> 
I will say this too: is I, you know, I, I, I'm a big snacker. Grew up in a big snacking family, and I love cheese. It's one of my favorite things on the planet. If we could find like a first generation, perfectly preserved box of cheese. It's sign me up. That sounds great, Josh. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us, sir. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Again, eating history. It is on the History Channel on Wednesday nights. Just recently premiered. Check it out. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. All of the information in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow dot com. If you grew up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you should consider joining us for this amazing vacation. My wife and I have been to this event the last three years, and we've had a blast. Join us at The Sands. Hear amazing music from Billy Idol. Cheap Trick. Belinda Carlisle. Little River Band. The Hooters. Tesla. Howard Jones. And many more. Plus, meet awesome stars from movies and TV. It's the best week ever. Learn more right now at thesands.rocks. That's thesands.rocks. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The fire hydrant patent was lost in a fire. How crazy is that? Oh, wow. It was credited to Frederick Frederick Graff Sr., chief engineer for Philadelphia Waterworks in the early 1800s. Unfortunately, the patent was destroyed when the patent office in D.C. burned down in 1836. After 100 years, retired firefighter George Silgix reinvented the fire hydrant after they had been failing to work in many critical emergencies. So the original one was different than what they have now, and the huh. patent for that burned up. So there you go. Interesting. That is today's fun fact. Not all credit cards are created equally. Some cards have higher rates, some have annual fees, some are just not very good. Often people will sign up for these because that's all they qualify for. But if you've done that, it may be time to get a better credit card. Over time, your situation can change. Then you could qualify for a better credit card, one that offers you a better rate, or one that offers miles, points, cash back, or whatever is the best fit for you. Check it out for free at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Now, a news headline from somewhere in this world, datelined Iceland. Hey, we were just in Iceland. Well, we weren't. We haven't been to Iceland. We weren't there, but we just went there with this feature like okay. a week ago. Uh, Dateline Iceland. Doctors in Iceland have discovered 40 different mutations of the coronavirus in different patients. So they're oh, saying that. Uh, That's not good. Yeah, that this thing's mutating and we better be careful because you can come out with a great vaccine that works on A, but what about B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way up to the, you know, Kinda all like 40. the flu. Yeah, so they're saying don't work on one vaccine, maybe work on a few. This has been a news headline from somewhere in this world. Drinking too much can ruin your life. Alcohol and drug issues can cause problems at work, at home, and pretty much everywhere. If substance abuse has taken over your life and you want to quit, there is help. Timeforrehab.com could be the first step in the right direction for you. Timeforrehab.com would love to help you find a new life beyond addiction. Your insurance company may even cover the cost to help make this happen. You can learn more now at timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Uh, some people are stealing toilet paper. Interstate 80 rest stops in Nebraska are coming up empty with toilet paper over and over and over. According to the Lincoln Star Journal, they, they cite thieves are stopping. And it says uh, because of that, they're going to be closing down some of the rest stops where they have no attendees present. A spokesperson told the newspaper, we're doing our best to keep them open. But we want to make sure that when we do keep them open, we have a safe location. Right. And that becomes maintaining it and making sure that it's in good condition. She said travelers will be told when the buildings are closed throughout the information number. So if you're driving in Nebraska, you can call a number and find out which are open or not. It says the novel coronavirus pandemic has led to a panic buying of toilet paper, and it's leading to shortages in some stores. And I know that there are some now that are kind of bounced back and things are good. People in Oregon have even dialed 911 because they've run out of toilet paper. Don't do that It's not that big of an emergency, all right? Thanks for listening to today's Weird News. Now your moment of duh brought to you by insurancechicken.com. A man accused of stealing thousands of respirator masks from a Portland business was arrested. Some stolen masks have been recovered and returned to the victim. Police say uh, they immediately donated the masks to a local hospital to help with the corona outbreak, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, 20 to 25 cases of N5, uh, N95 respirator masks were stolen from a rebuilding center in Portland. Each case had 400 masks. A total loss was somewhere around $2,500 worth okay. of masks. The victim notified 
uh, or noticed rather an ad on Craigslist for what he thought were his stolen masks. Officers showed up for a meeting and arrested the 42-year-old suspect, Vladziskvif de Drozdik, <laughs> of Beaverton. I don't know. I probably got the name maybe a little off. Anyway, he's charged uh, and held in Washington County Jail, faces first-degree theft. Police say further arrests could be possible. So there you go. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. If you do, you'll end up right here in a moment of duh, and then I'll probably mispronounce your name. Introducing InsuranceChicken.com. <laughs> Why InsuranceChicken.com? Why not? Another insurance company has a duck, one has an emu, and that other company has a lizard. So InsuranceChicken.com is no more silly than any of those. Is it time for you to cross the road for your insurance? Don't be chicken. Check out InsuranceChicken.com. We'll help you peck out the best insurance rates we can find at InsuranceChicken.com. That's InsuranceChicken.com. Time now for fake news or Florida. Heidi, tell me, is this a true story from the great state of Florida? Or is it hashtag fake news made up to trick you and amuse me? Ready? I am ready. All right, tell me. Fake news or Florida? Dade County man busted for drunk flying a helicopter after he landed in a strip club parking lot. Fake news or Florida? Fake news. It is fake news. Good job. That, I thought, sounded pretty believable. No. No? What part's not believable? Well, because there would be cars in the parking lot, and he couldn't land the helicopter. Maybe it wasn't busy. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) But it wasn't true. So two points for Heidi. Thanks for listening to Fake News or Florida on The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of The John and Heidi Show is brought to you by The John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news. I think this is good news. What a cool story. I wish I could do stuff like this, but I can't. Like what? Uh, Good news comes away courtesy of bettercreditcards.com. Says, uh, here's a headline. Man hands out $10,000 in cash to people waiting in an unemployment line. Oh, wow. A man in Australia was seen handing out $100 in cash to each of the hundreds of jobless workers outside the uh, office here in Melbourne. And there's a photo here of people... Uh, and then there's a photo of him. Peter Dar- uh, Darmos, 62, handed out a total of $10,000 wow. because he, quote, felt sick to his stomach after seeing the queues of people with no means to put some bread on their table for their families. The gratitude, the tears in people's eyes, it was unbelievable, he said. A businessman who uh, moved there from Greece as a child urged the other wealthy Australians to donate to workers in industries that have been crippled by coronavirus as well. He says, I came here as a six-year-old from a village in Greece, and this country has been good to me. He says, we can all hit the central offices across the country in 30 seconds today and hand out uh, a leaf lettuce to each. Oh, we can all hit. There we go. Not we can't. We can all hit. So he's basically saying, we can all go to these lines. Yeah, we can all Hand out a leaf lettuce to each person in need so they can put some food on their tables. I wonder if when he's saying leaf lettuce, if he's talking about like a... I think he's talking about cash. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. Uh, he was not interested in disclosing his identity, but somebody else in a news outlet, he just said his name was John, um, after some persuasion, somebody said, no, this is who he is, and this is what business he owns, and right. they gave... But I think they should have allowed him to continue to be anonymous, because he's going, if no, he I wanted don't. to be, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But they, they pressed and you know found somebody who knew who he was. Well, he didn't want to be... So, Peter, thank you, John. For what you did, I think that's really, really cool. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. I've got a link to this good news in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com.